If you told me back then I would be able to use my own hardware to generate media assets from text prompts, I would never have believed you. But here we are. In this video, I'll go over the components of this build and some of the customizations I've added to turn my old gaming PC into a powerful home server. Yes, you heard that right. This PC started its life as a gaming PC. This would actually explain several of the power inefficient components inside. But hey, it all worked out in the end, so I'm happy. Even though I like the idea of having a machine reliable enough to serve my files and run a few self-hosted services at the same time, I wanted it to be powerful as well. I want to be able to spin up VMs when I want to be productive and run tasks related to AI like asset generation using stable diffusion. In other words, I wanted a home server that could handle everything I threw at it. And this is what I came up with. This home server was built a few years ago and has evolved quite a bit. It used to run a couple of GPUs, but I've since scaled that down to only one GPU to accommodate a 10 gigabit PCIe card instead. I've added several hard drives, printed custom parts, and also changed the airflow configuration. To kick things off, Let's talk about the case. This is the Inwin 303, and I'll be honest, it really isn't the best home server case. This case was built for water cooling, so of course, there is a provision to mount a pump, but unfortunately, very little space to mount hard drives. The airflow setup is also quite tricky, but I'll admit, that's what drew me to the chassis in the first place. There's just something about those three side-mounted fans that make the case so unique, so I just had to find a way to make it work. The fans you see on the side are actually exhaust fans, with one of them running straight to the power supply. So the first thing I changed was to flip the PSU over so it could take in fresh air from the other side of the case instead of reusing hot air from the other components. It would have been so much easier if the intake fans were at front, but they're not. They're found at the bottom. There's quite a bit of distance for the cool filtered air from the intake to reach the top, so this has generally resulted in negative pressure for the case's airflow. The fans at the top suck air in from other areas of the case, like the holes at the back. I sealed these off using an air filter and 3D printed blank PCIe covers. While this may seem counterintuitive as I'm technically limiting airflow to some components, I'm doing this to isolate all air intake so it comes from the bottom where it's filtered. This is because I spent a few hours over the weekend cleaning the case and discovered so much dust. I realized that I want this build to be as low maintenance as possible, and that means air filtration is a big priority. I've also tweaked the intake fans to run slightly faster than the exhaust to hopefully result in a more positive airflow. This configuration is pretty new, so I've installed the Docker container to sync temperature readings with Home Assistant so I can continue to improve this aspect of the build. Now let's talk about the hard drives. The case has provisions to mount hard drives at the back of the motherboard, but there isn't any airflow there, so I've decided to 3D print this custom hard drive cage designed by X Cooling and put it on top of the front intake fan. It's literally just sitting there for the moment as I have no clue how to use Fusion 360 yet, but once I do, I'll create a new one that mounts directly on top of the fan. I had a few SATA cables running around the case, so to clean that up, I picked up some thin cables from Amazon. I'd love to improve how these hard drives are connected, but it really isn't a big deal at the moment. So for now, that task sits very low in my to-do list. My hard drive choice isn't very exciting, as these drives have been with me for the past few years already. They're just a collection of several drives that allow me to have 18 terabytes of storage, with one drive set as a parity drive in case something goes wrong. Running Unraid as my operating system has allowed me to mix and match hard drives and it has been really useful for my use case. I have a 1TB NVMe drive as well for running my VMs and to act as a cache drive and it's been really great. Now moving on to the PCIe cards. The first one is a 10 gigabit card, which has probably become my favorite upgrade of all. I know I planned on using this machine to run heavy tasks, but that's mostly about testing new technologies and having fun. When it actually comes to productivity, like making these videos for example, this device has just been a massive upgrade to my workflow. The other card is an old Nvidia GPU that I used to pass through to a Windows VM for some gaming, but ever since building a new gaming PC, that's no longer the case. I now use this primarily to help me run Invoke AI. Since I'm not a graphic artist, 
Asset generation is probably one of my favorite use cases of AI right now, and I'm happy that I can play with different stable diffusion models by running Invoke AI in a Docker container. Invoke AI is a stable diffusion toolkit to generate visual media. It's got a nice UI that allows me to try out different models, and it's been working well. I've been playing around with it to create an asset pack for an RPG game I'm building, so stay tuned for that. I want to quickly mention that even though my NVIDIA GPU is technically compatible with AI tasks. It's a 980 Ti. And since it's so old, it sits in the low end of the performance spectrum. I might upgrade this to improve rendering performance, but it's currently just a hobby, and I'm happy that at least everything works. I'll admit, this is a whole nother rabbit hole that probably warrants a different video. If you want to learn more about my AI workflow, then please leave a comment down below. For now though, let's go back to my home server. Since I'm running a lot of powerful, but very old hardware, you might have guessed it. It isn't power efficient at all. The motherboard is an Astrox Z390 Pro, and it was the cheapest one I could find at the time. It has six SATA slots, support for two NVMe drives, and has four RAM slots that currently house 64 gigs of RAM. The processor is an i7-9700K because as I've mentioned earlier in the video, this PC was originally built for gaming. There are a few drawbacks with running gaming hardware for your home server, like not being able to add more drives, or having a generally higher power consumption for example, but since I have a pretty unique use case, I'm happy to take the trade-off. I'll probably build another home server focused on power consumption in the future, but for now, this machine has served all my needs and more. There's still so much I want to talk about, mostly on the software side of things but I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll just save that for another video. I hope you enjoyed the general overview of my home server. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching.